Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about some of your hyperpigmentation concerns, specifically post-inflammatory related, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and post-inflammatory erythema. We're gonna talk about what the heck that is, why you even have it in the first place and what products are gonna actually help you treat it. So, you finally managed to clear the acne, congrats! But now you're left with some discoloration left over from those scars, a really not so great reminder of the acne itself. So this discoloration can either be PIH, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, or PIE, post-inflammatory erythema. I've heard a lot of people talk about the fact that they have PIH. But if it's actually not PIH and it's PIE instead, the products you're using might not work because actually the causes are very different. So what's post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation? Well, it's the brown and black spots you get from melanin overproduction. Melanin is actually just the brown pigment that gives your skin its color and tone. But melanin overproduction can get triggered by the way that your skin heals after inflammation or injury. So that can be from acne scars or skin treatments like dermabrasion, chemical peels, or laser therapy. And PIH is pretty common, especially if you have darker skin. Okay, so what's post-inflammatory erythema? It shows up as a different color from PIH, first of all. It's a pinky red discoloration that you get when your skin is inflamed or traumatized. So that can be from inflammatory acne, picking out and popping pimples, chemical burns, over exfoliation, and sunburns. Basically, there are these small blood vessels really close to your skin surface, and when they get damaged or dilated, it shows up as redness and discoloration. Usually, you're much more likely to get PIE if you have a lighter skin tone. Still confused? Okay, so black or brown spots are basically PIH, and the pinky red purple spots are PIE. And if you have a darker skin tone, PIH is much more common. If you have a lighter skin tone, PIE is much more common. Just to throw a wrench in there, you can also get PIH and PIE. But if you're still confused, there's a really simple test that you can do to see if it is PIE. So you grab a glass and press it against your skin. And if the redness disappears against it, then it's PIE. The only thing that you should really know is that it's not 100% accurate. So what can you do about these two skin concerns and will they just go away on their own? They can go away on their own, but it'll take a long time. I'm talking months to a year, so if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you don't want to wait that long and you actually want to speed up that process. Okay, so let's talk about PIH first because there's been a lot more research done on PIH. First, let's talk about one of the most important things you can do. Step one, don't make it worse. Avoid the sun and always be sunscreening. So the sun can make PIH much worse by making the spots even darker and actually prolonging the time it takes for those spots to fade away on their own. Why is that the case? Well, the sun's rays are pretty damaging to your skin. And melanin actually absorbs those really harmful UV rays to protect your skin from overexposure. It's the mechanism for how you can end up with a tan, but it can also make your hyperpigmentation much worse. So if you really want to reduce the look of your PIH, you have to wear sunscreen. Look for a sunscreen with an SPF of at least 30, broad spectrum protection, and make sure to reapply every two hours. Just one day of getting too much sun can undo months of treatment for your hyperpigmentation. So if you're still not convinced and you want to learn how to find the best sunscreen for you, go ahead and check out my video for everything you need to know about sunscreens. So if you're looking for a recommendation and you really don't know what to buy, I really love this sunscreen. It's the Purito Comfy Water Sunblock with SPF 50 and broad spectrum protection. It's a mineral sunscreen with a water-based formulation and I find it's the best sunscreen for people who don't love sunscreens. It's really easy to apply and it doesn't really leave any white cast. I bought it for about $20 on Amazon, so it's pretty affordable as well. Okay, so now you've got your sunscreen and you're not making your hyperpigmentation worse, what ingredients and what products can you buy over the counter to actually help treat it? 
So the first ingredient is niacinamide. If you haven't heard about niacinamide already, it's basically vitamin B3. And one of the functions of niacinamide is it really helps to fade discoloration. It doesn't stop the production of melanin, but it reduces the amount that's actually transferred to your skin. The thing I really love about niacinamide though is it's a really stable ingredient so you don't have to worry about it really going off and you can use it every day without irritating your skin. So some great niacinamide serums out there, one of them is the niacinamide 10% plus 1% zinc by The Ordinary. This guy is only $5.90 US so you really can't go wrong with this. Another great one is the Maylove. NIA 10 Calming Serum, which has niacinamide, zinc, but also white tea extract. This guy is $27.95, but unfortunately they don't ship internationally. The last one I'll mention is the Paula's Choice 10% Niacinamide Booster, which is priced at $44 US. What I really love about this booster is that it also includes N-acetylglucosamine, which has a really synergistic effect when combined with niacinamide. So the second ingredient I really want to talk about is vitamin C. Vitamin C is an incredible, incredible antioxidant. So it brightens the hyperpigmented spots on your skin, but it won't lighten the normal skin around it. And it can really help you achieve that glow. There are some downsides though, especially if you're dealing with the pure form of vitamin C, also known as L-exorbic acid, which doesn't have a very long shelf life and it can sometimes be irritating, especially if you have sensitive skin. So if you're gonna go for that pure form of vitamin C, be careful not to overdo it. So one of my favorite vitamin C serums is the SkinCeutical CE and Ferulic. It's the OG vitamin C serum with a bunch of synergistic antioxidants working together. However, again, because it includes the pure form of vitamin C, it can be sensitizing, plus it's got a pretty high price tag at $166 for this bottle. Because of that, I also wanted to share some dupes of the SkinCeuticals vitamin C serum. There's the Timeless 20% vitamin C for Luke acid and vitamin E serum. You can pick this up for $25.95 US dollars. And another great dupe is the Maylove Glow Maker Antioxidant Serum, which retails for $27.95. But again, unfortunately, Maylove only ships to US postal codes. And if you have really sensitive skin, another great dupe is the Mad Hippie Vitamin C Serum, which uses a much less irritating vitamin C derivative, making it much more suitable if you have sensitive skin, called Sodium Exorbal Phosphate. And you can pick it up for $33.99. The third ingredient category I wanted to highlight is alpha hydroxy acids, aka AHAs. So AHAs exfoliate off the dead skin cells on the skin surface and reveal newer skin underneath, meaning the skin pigment is brought to the surface much faster where it's then free to shed off. If you're gonna incorporate AHAs into your routine, start on the more gentle end first. What you really don't wanna do is inflame your skin further, making the problem worse and getting stuck in this never ending cycle. If you've never used AHAs before, I would suggest you pick up the Ordinary Glycolic Acid 7% Toning Solution. This retails for $8.70 US, and as you can see, I've completely used it up, so it's, it's one of my favorite products. And if you want to start a little bit more gentler even, you can go with the Ordinary's Lactic Acid 10% Plus Hyaluronic Acid Serum, which only costs $6.50 US. These guys are really affordable products. There are no frills, but they're definitely gonna get the job done for you. So if you're an acid queen and you know everything about AHAs and you've already graduated up to the Ordinary's 30% acid peel, you're on the right track. Chemical peels have definitely been shown to help, but just be careful not to overdo it because chemical peels can actually cause more inflammation, making the problem worse. So the fourth ingredient category is retinoids. Retinoids are really great too because they can reduce the amount of melanin in your skin surface, but they can be really sensitizing too. If your PIH comes from acne scars, you're probably well aware of prescription retinoids on the market. They can be even more sensitizing, so just be careful to monitor how they feel on your skin. So the fifth ingredient, azelaic acid, can also be really effective. 
It works by decreasing inflammation and increasing the cell turnover rates. And azelaic acid can be used in combination with glycolic acids or retinoids. So I also wanted to highlight three natural ingredients that can help your PIH. They might be a really great idea to look out for if you're on prescription medication and your skin has become really sensitized from that medication. So the first ingredient is licorice root. Licorice root is really great because it contains two components that help tackle hyperpigmentation. One holds back the enzyme that produces melanin. The other helps to break up and remove melanin and pigmentation in the skin. A really great Bay Beauty pick here is by Aquel. Their licorice pH balancing cleansing toner has a really high concentration of licorice root water. It actually appears as the second highest on the ingredient list and it's pretty affordable at only $18. Another great product that just launched recently is the Good Skin Days Seize the Day Serum. It retails for $26 US, but it has a lot of the ingredients we just talked about, so it definitely includes the licorice root extract in there, but there's also niacinamide, and the star ingredient is 10% alexorbic acid, which is the pure form of vitamin C, so it's definitely a really great product, especially for $26. All right, so the second natural ingredient I really wanted to highlight is Arbutin. Arbutin is usually extracted from the bearberry plant and it's kind of a safer, still effective cousin to hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is kind of a controversial ingredient that's been banned in lots of places like the EU, the UK, Japan, and Australia. But Arbutin is a much safer option. If you're pregnant, I would still avoid Arbutin even though it's considered natural because it's still related to hydroquinone. So the effects of Arbutin on pregnant women haven't really been studied, but hydroquinone is definitely not considered pregnancy safe, so you should probably play it safe and just straight up avoid it if you're pregnant. So for product picks, my budget pick is the Ordinary Alpha Arbutin 2% plus Hyaluronic Acid, which is a pretty good deal at $8.90 US. And for my higher end pick, Obagi Clinical has a 10% vitamin C with alpha arbutin serum. So you get both the vitamin C and the arbutin, but it's definitely not budget friendly at $90. The last natural ingredient I really wanted to highlight is kojic acid. So kojic acid is derived from mushroom-like fungi during the fermentation process. It prohibits melanin production and penetrates the upper layers of the skin resulting in a lightening effect. But surprise, surprise, it can cause redness and irritation. Always start with a low-dose version and patch test it before you slather it all over your face. So my product pick, unfortunately, is not a budget pick. It's the Peter Thomas Roth's Pro Strength Niacinamide Discoloration Treatment, which includes a handful of the ingredients I just talked about, so it's kind of an all-in-one. It's got the kojic acid in there, but it also has a niacinamide and alpha arbutin, as well as something called tranexamic acid. So tranexamic acid has been shown to help UV-induced PIH in Asian countries, but researchers don't really know actually what the mechanism is that causes it to work. So this PTR treatment definitely is a splurge at $88, but it's got all of these ingredients included in it, so you make the call. Okay, so now that we've covered the over-the-counter PIH products ingredients pretty thoroughly, let's move on to the over-the-counter PIE products and treatments. So PIE is nowhere near as well researched as PIH because, well, the term didn't even exist until 2013. The most effective treatment is laser therapy for PIE, but there is some evidence out there that shows that topical treatments can still help. So with PIE, you're essentially looking for products that can really help you with these three things. Number one, repair the skin barrier. Number two, reduce inflammation. And number three, reduce blood vessel dilation. So vitamin C checks all these boxes and also helps with PIH. So if you have both these conditions, then vitamin C is great for that. Again, the products I would recommend for vitamin C are the SkinCeutical CE and Ferulic Serum, the OG, the Maylove Glow Maker Serum as a good dupe, or the Timeless 20% Vitamin C, Ferulic Acid, and Vitamin E Serum as another great dupe. And if you have sensitive skin, the Mad Hippie Vitamin C Serum. I also wanted to bring up here the Dear Claire's Freshly Juiced Vitamin C Drop. You can buy it for $22 US, 
And the good thing about it is it even works for sensitive skin because it only contains 5% of the pure form of vitamin C. The serum also contains Centella Asiatica, aka Sika, which calms inflammation and redness as well. Another ingredient that does double duty for PIH and PIE is niacinamide. Niacinamide checks two boxes for PIE. It helps with barrier repair function and reduces inflammation. Again, the three products I would recommend with niacinamide are the Ordinary Niacinamide 10% plus 1% Zinc, May Love NIA 10 Calming Serum, or the Paula's Choice Niacinamide Booster. So some natural ingredients that check the box of reducing inflammation are azelaic acid and green tea. So I talked briefly about azelaic acid in the last section where we talked about PIH, and it's another ingredient that does double duty. Azelaic acid is produced by a yeast that lives on our skin naturally. It helps speed up your cell turnover rates and reduces bacteria in your pores as well, so it can also help with acne. The Ordinary has a product called the Azelaic Acid Suspension 10%, which costs $7.90 US, and it kind of has this like cream gel texture to it, but 10% is a really high concentration, so just make sure you patch test it before you use it. I love green tea cleansers. A really great option is the Youth to the People's Superfood Antioxidant Cleanser. It retails for $36, and it's a great option if you have combination skin or skin a little bit more on the oilier side. So it's got the green tea extract, but it also has vitamin C. So it's a great cleanser. So now that we've gone through a bunch of the over-the-counter ingredients and products to help you with your PIH and PIE, I wanted to really say one thing, and that's to be patient. With topical treatments, you gotta check your expectations. It may take weeks or even months to see noticeable changes. A high level, the rule is if you have really subtle marks, then over-the-counter products can really help you. Over-the-counter products are basically any product that you can buy without a prescription. But if your marks are older or darker and nothing you do seems to really work, then it might be time to see a dermatologist to get a prescription or to help you with some professional treatments like peels or lasers. So what I'm saying is, even if you've been patient and you've done all your research, sometimes you just need to see a dermatologist. So if you have PIH and you go see a dermatologist, they might prescribe a topical treatment like hydroquinone. So hydroquinone is still the most effective and it works by killing the cells that produce melanin in the first place. But like I said before, it's been banned by a whole bunch of countries because it's got a historical link with cancer. But some people argue that those historical links go way back to the 1960s. So if you decide to go ahead with this controversial product, just make sure you do your research ahead of time and you're comfortable with that decision. Dermatologists can also prescribe retinoids like tretinoin, which you'll probably know all about if your hyperpigmentation comes from acne. Tretinoin 0.1% cream, also known by their brand names Retin-A or even Curology, has been shown to be effective for hyperpigmentation. The downsides to these prescription medications is that they can be really irritating and they can still take three to six months to work their magic. There are also a few effective laser treatments like the PIQ04 laser and other pigmented lesion lasers which can remove pigment without scarring and they can be a lot more targeted in hitting those hyperpigmented areas. But they can be really expensive and a PIQ04 laser treatment can typically cost about $500 US per session. And now when it comes to PIE, Again, there's not a whole bunch of research when it comes to this topic, but it turns out that vascular lasers, like pulse dye lasers, can really help. So these lasers work by destroying the blood vessels, which then get healed and reabsorbed back into the body. But again, it can get really expensive, so it can cost anywhere from 300 US to $1,000 US per session, depending on how big the area getting treated is. All right. So now you probably know more about PIH and PIE than you ever really wanted to know. So I'm gonna leave you with three final points 
So the first is before you start doing any treatments, if the cause of your PIH or PIE comes from acne, you really should get that under control first or else the PIH or PIE is just gonna come up over again and again and again. The second tip is to always be sunscreening. The sun is especially damaging if hyperpigmentation is an issue for you, but even if it's not, it's really important to help prevent premature aging. And the third and final tip I wanted to leave you with is remember to back off and just really be kind to your skin because a lot of the ingredients and products I mentioned today can have a really high potential for irritation, making your skin even more inflamed and making the problem worse. So just remember to be kind to your skin. All right, so we made it to the end of the video. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions because I covered a lot in this video. And if it was helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my informative skincare videos. And I'll see you next time.